Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast for August 2022. This is episode 16. Uh, today we have uh, two very special guests, but first I'll introduce myself. I am Iron. I'm one of the hosts for today. Uh, with me is Jordan97. Hello. And uh, unfortunately, Etiquette couldn't make it th- make it this this, this month, but uh, we'll see him again uh, next month for sure. Uh, our two guests are uh, Head Bob. Hello. And T Pat. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. All right. Welcome to both of those two. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you guys about your runs. Uh, first off, we're gonna just talk a little bit about some leaderboard stuff. Uh, the one major thing we that has been pointed out for uh, for this past month is the let's go all obtainable Pokemon timing has been changed slightly. Uh, initially, the timing ended when you go up to Professor Oak and he confirms that you've caught all 135 Pokemon. Uh, but now that has been changed and you just simply need to flash the save screen which shows 135 in your Pokedex. Uh, as far as I know, uh, old runs will not be retimed because it's kind of difficult to kind of figure out what that timing is uh, because that's not so you wouldn't normally flash the save screen so it would be kind of a i'm sure something could be done but at this point in time as far as i know we're not going to be changing any of the uh the timings of the old runs but this will be applied to any new runs that are submitted to the leaderboards from here on which as you can see there are a lot of runs on the leaderboard right now so that would be a lot of work to do uh probably anyway um, that's about the only thing leaderboard wise, uh, to discuss for this month. Um, we can start moving into our, uh, noted runs. We've got quite a few of them, uh, for this month. Uh, none from the, uh, Game Boy games, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but we do have one from the, uh, DS games and that's Dexy's Heart Gold Soul Silver, uh, any percent glitchless Japanese world record with a 324.49. Um, apparently we have a new man- Japanese Manip path here, uh, and a new Radio Manip, um, which was, uh, worked on by Tucker, uh, who we've seen in the podcast, uh, quite a few times prior. Uh, this apparently saves about 30 seconds on the old method, um, of the Raikou Manip. I'm assuming it's still the same general route, just a few small minor optimizations here. I don't know if uh, you have any idea, any other thing, you, any, uh, anything else you know about this, uh, Jordan? Uh, not so much that I know. I just see that Tucker is in the chat at the moment. So, if uh, Tucker could, well, Tucker, well, I assume Tucker has more of an idea. They made the route. <laughs> like, they made, they made the Manip, so I assume they know everything about this, the Manip itself and what the difference is. But, um, yeah, just Dexy's really good with uh, the DS runs. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, adding another Japanese world record. I don't know if this was actually, I mean, I could quickly check. Um, but is this a beat their own time world records? Or is this a... Ooh, I'm not sure. Scrolled past it, yeah. Whatever it was, it was a pretty big record, I think. If I remember correctly. It was glitchless Japanese the I'm going to shoot with the SDS, so go let's to, look go at to, go to obsolete. obsolete yeah. uh, okay, beat, like, yep. beat his own time, wow. but yeah, like a good chunk of time save there. Almost, almost two minutes, yeah. Definitely Dexy. 325 skip. D Tucker. Also, uh, Tucker actually wrote the, uh, the description for this. Uh, because, oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah, so like... Uh, Tucker will be a host, or like a host every now and then, uh, but definitely will yeah, be... Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome Tucker to the, uh, to the hosts, for sure. Yeah, but when Tucker is not on, I will be very politely asking Tucker to explain everything DS <laughs> and put it in there. <laughs> so, I think at this point, though, we should probably move on to the first of one of our guest friends, Headbob. Uh, the XY 80% second place, um, a 340.51. I'm going to yeah. let you just take this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, pretty, like, standard run. Um, 
I implemented something for the first time that's never been done before since it was implemented into the initial route. Um, and it was the most recent route change, the most recent like significant route change, was buying six proteins after the fifth gym leader in Laver City. Um, and that improves uh, some very important ranges on some pretty bad normally fights. Uh, the main ones being the two Lysander fights and the water type E4 member Seabold. Um, but it is pretty slow to do that. Um, so by skipping them, you add pretty decent amount of risk to your run, but it saves up to 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds even. Um, and so this run, as a result of um, a couple of things, this split, the, the one that you're watching right now, uh, the Karina split, went pretty poorly. Um, I lost quite a lot of time. I lost probably around a, a minute or so um, to that split. So the pace was not that good. And so I was readied up with with protein skip in my inventory. Um, and I, I pulled it out for this run and it allowed me to get my goal time, which is really nice. Well, there was one other thing that you, you pointed out to us about this run as I try and find it. But you also mentioned that you got the community gold for Sycamore. Yeah, um, it's actually a pretty hard gold to get. You have to both play well, have you have to play well, have a good attack Quacklin, uh, get a very hard range, and then crit on the exact turn that you need to to get the perfect fight. And that's what happened here. Um, that saves like it saves around ten seconds on average to do that. Um, so yeah, pretty good amount of time ahead going into the the harder parts of this run, the, the next couple splits after this. Yeah, so yeah, so for the, for the, pro, for, for the proteins, you, I guess, have to pick up, do you have to pick up any items to sell or do you have any? Uh, no, 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 you just enter, you enter a Pokemon center just, just to buy oh, them. Okay. And then, yeah, you, you have no other, you have no other reason to be in there, so. Got you it. just don't even enter it. I'm just thinking, like, Tifa, because I, Tifa, I know you're, like, very much in the I don't, do you ever do XY? I've never done XY. I do own a copy of, uh, as I look over on this side here. Wow, which one <laughs> do I have? Uh, I have, as I, okay. I have X. Uh, so I do own a copy of X, but I have never played it before. And I mean, it just looks like from from looking at the video here. I guess X is the optimal one, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Into, yeah, I never really looked into the Kalos runs, um, just because yeah, around those like mid generation, so gens uh, four, five, six, and then like the start of seven. Um, I wasn't like super into the Pokemon scene, uh, but then starting back in like twenty twenty when I met Keys. Uh, kind of kind of dragged me back into it, so I've been just kind of scrounging through um, some of the games I have and got more into the newer games. But yeah, I did Oras, but never uh, haven't touched X yet. Uh, Probably my favorite run. I think it's really really enjoyable. If anyone wants to try it out, <laughs> interesting route for sure. Yeah, what what is it about X that you actually enjoy? Like, oh, that's is it is it your favorite run? Because I mean, you've been doing a lot of 3DS runs because of the. I mean, obviously, when you get to a top level, like, probably below, like, 345, it gets really, really bad to grind out. But I think I like the route as a whole, like, more so than any other route. I think it's just, like, a really cool route. Mm. Yeah, I can, like... It's a bit of a shame that the cool routes are typically the ones that are more of a pain to... Yeah, finish. yeah, same with Usum. <laughs> well, I guess, like... That's part of, the, part of the reason why it's so cool is because like it switches mains, but when you're switching the main, there's adding another level of yeah, variants yeah. that can cause issues. But this isn't the only whole Lucha run that you've even gone to PB in this month. This is this is arguably the... Well, I'm not going to say more impressive, but I'll say more impressive than the fact that you actually just managed to finish an Usum run. Yeah, uh... <laughs> But the great uh, highlight here. Um, Five thirty-two twenty-four for the new uh, ultra uh, ultra sun ultra moon world record. Um, let me read verbatim the reason why we're showing this bit. Um, 
or by verbatim I mean the one line which you should never say if you want to avoid <laughs> me highlighting the clothes. Please don't show her that one. It's so easily preventable. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, all you have to do for that one is just hug the left side. And I was, like, not sure if that, like... Because, some... Cause, like, I've never, like, had an issue with that one before. So I was wondering if you could just, like, you know... Just not do it. And I paid the price for it. Um, but, I mean, other than that, this run was, like, really... I, I played very well, and I got really lucky. Um, yeah. in, like, the important sections. I personally remember seeing you dropping in the... I think it was, like, the like the PB's channel uh, in the 3DS Discord. Because you had gotten, like, a PB right before this. And you were like, yeah, this is whatever, okay. And then, like, the next day, it's like, oh, hey, I did better today. Yeah, it was, like, 12 minutes worse, that PB. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of an improvement. It was, it was a bit significant. Um... But yeah, uh, I mean, everything just went really well. I, th I think it's going to be a pretty hard record to beat, despite the optional in the in the death. Yeah, because you also had, oh, well, you said you at least had a really good ultra wormhole, which from why here this is like, it's one like of the, the biggest one of the, of the biggest sections where you can yeah, lose time, for sure. So as people have been shown how ultra wormholes work, I guess, uh, with the instructions beforehand. Yeah, like is. Is, is there, like, no way in terms of, like, I guess there is no way in terms of, like, trying to get it to be quicker? Because, like, yeah, no. you're just having to wait for, is it a white? It's a white one, right? Yeah, true. It's not even guaranteed to show up the first time you go into the wormholes. So you can literally just, like, keep going and you will just never see it, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll have to go in again and try again. So it can lose, like, I mean, technically an infinite amount of time. But realistically, like, five minutes you can lose to that. Oof. So it's like really bad. Pokemon RNG at its finest. Whoa, wait, it was just like that fast? Whoa. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> because wow. I usually see this part when people are getting uh, closer to Necrozma and they're just going and going and going and going in these wormholes. And that looked like the that was easily the fastest I've ever seen. Yeah, it's the fastest I've ever gotten. I don't think I, I think I maybe have seen Primal get something like similar. But it really is hard to get it, like, actually first wormhole. So, I mean, this is, like, as reasonably as good as you're going to get, so. <laughs> yeah. And then let's, so, yeah. Just, let's just bring Headbolt back down a bit with the uh, the other thing that happened with the... the oh. <laughs> I, I won't say it yet because it's going to come up in, like, a few seconds. But this I'm sure you can figure out what it is when I'm using the move high jump kick. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, does this have to do with a, a certain uh, ninety percent accuracy move? That <laughs> yeah, it's not not pleasant sometimes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I missed high jump kick on Ilima's uh, gum shoes during the um, fairy trial, where you have to fight all the uh, like major um, trial people again. I don't even know what they're called. Um, and as a result, I lost around like 30, 40 seconds. So yeah, not the best. Wait, when did they, when did high jump kick do less than half to yourself if you miss? Was that like in like the Switch? That was, I guess, in the Switch games. Uh, No, at least for Sword Shield, it still does half, I believe. I think, I think it was. I think, B, I think BDS, I know in BDSP it does, does not do half. Because I've seen in like. Probably Legends Arceus, it probably doesn't do half if it's even in the game. Yeah. Because some moves are weird like that, but trying to think the only other experience i have with high jump kick is in the crystal randomizers uh and i believe that is calculated as half the damage you would have dealt so yeah. if you miss against oh, a blissey man. it's really bad but if you miss like <laughs> against anything else it's like oh that kind of hurt but and gen not, one actually just does not, like super fatal in gen one it actually just does one damage to you like always one damage. So, oh yeah, because it's bu it's like bugged out or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Also saying, Gen one to two does so little. -er. <laughs> I I can distinctly remember uh, Crystal Randomizer where I, <laughs> I had a high jump kicking Porygon two, and I went for it against a Blissey and I missed, and it did like ninety percent my health, and I was like, 
Oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to try this again. I can't possibly miss two high jump kicks in a row. Now, could I? And then I yeah, just of course. <laughs> killed myself. <laughs> Whoops. The famous last words there. Yeah, yeah the, exactly. The, dam the, crash, yeah, the crash damage changed like every generation for the first four generations or something. <laughs> Or first three, yeah. That, Very that interesting was, move. That was back when high jump kick was only 90, 95 power and not 130 as it is now. Yeah. Yeah, it started at 85 in Gen 1. Well, interesting. And then yeah. I, I guess, though, like, it's just slightly changing or going back to, like, the rune specifically. Has there been an Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon world record that hasn't hit an optional? More times before I hit two, I believe. Yeah. Um. I think maybe his old 3DS run didn't hit an optional. I don't know much maybe. about it. Old 3DS. Um, okay. Yeah. Zapple so 2 just confirming that. Because yeah, it seems like on the new 3DS side, it still seems to be like a a good chunk of time, I guess, just from, I guess in this case, not hitting optionals. Now guessing everything to line up. Is the right. difficult thing, I assume. That's the hard part. There's still definitely some potential to knock it down. Yeah. Wait, I guess was this was this this run the previous record was very very old, if I recall correctly, right? Uh, it was a couple of years old, yeah, like 2020 uh, maybe. No, I thought I'm, it was. I'm, uh, I'm on a leaderboard now. It looks like Ringo oh. 2018. Oh, 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 so yeah, um, Wartab. The, like he had the world record before oh, his where, times oh, aren't oh, up he on the board. His times. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. he removed his times. So I think that was I don't know if it was earlier this year or the back end of last year. Or it could have even been a year ago. Like times melded together at this point. Yeah. But <laughs> uh there was a more recent time. Oh actually well Hang on, wait. Was it hang on, was it this game that Ringo and Water had tied? No, that was Moon. That was Moon. Okay, then never mind. Because Ringo did get the world record after Wartab got that one right. For Moon. Uh, oh, am I yes. getting that wrong as well? Correct. Or no, no, no. No, no, no. I think, I think Wartab tied Ringo. Oh, okay. Okay. If I recall cool. correctly. Very interesting. Yeah, fair enough. Alright. Yeah, that is all of the 3DS runs. Let's go on to the, the Switch runs. And we'll start with Let's Go. Actually, with this Let's Go Pikachu 80% uh, with Mountscapes, as that shows in this. Like, as Etchy's reaction tells. Reaction. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, uh, is there audio on that? Um, uh, just going through I, the stream right now <laughs> because he hyperventilates. He did hyperventilate, he literally. Uh, I, if you can give me a moment, I can sort that out. I just I didn't oh, want to like interrupt anything, I but I just that. remember. Oh my god! The, I this mean, that's a genuine reaction oh of how incredibly hyped it was to get a mount skip and get one that doesn't lose enough experience oh that god, still guarantees the uh, that you hit uh, fifty three for Dragonite. Dragonite. Yeah. So apologies for audio. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I can't do this. I can't do this. No, no, no. Oh my god. Yeah, that fight's just... Is it just the one Pokemon in that fight? It is two Kangaskhan. Pokemon. It's the oh, Kangaskhan it's that's the most important yeah. because the Kangaskhan is... Sometimes can be a Hydro Pump range, uh, but even if it's not, you still have to hit a Hydro Pump and you will X Special Attack, Hydro Pump, and if you miss, you die because the Kangaskhan has Crunch. Uh, and that's the problem. Uh, the second yeah. Pokemon's a Venusaur, and you just psychic that, and you're fine. I apparently muted the wrong thing. Well, I mean, I didn't mute. <laughs> everyone heard the video. They probably just but all of, heard everyone twice for a bit, so my apologies on that end. But you get the idea. Uh, actually, hyperventilated effectively <laughs> when yeah. that happened. Uh, but yeah, as, as Steve had mentioned, that, yeah. Sorry, as Steve Pat mentioned, that's really interesting. Uh, like to know that you can still hit that Dragonite level threshold with that, because because some of the others you're fighting, I guess, three Mons. So yeah, I think it's that, the... that a bit of risk. Yeah, 
Yeah, because the, the trainer that you see on the screen is also a two Pokemon. Uh, and then the other two, uh, at air quotes, required trainers that you could mount skip are both three Pokemon trainers. Uh, but it's not like, it's yeah. not the end of the world if you don't have enough experience. Uh, it just makes Lance a little bit slower if you are not going to hit level 53 for Dragonite. It's... I think it's a range if you're at really high special attack. Don't quote me on that. I haven't done the calcs myself. Uh, otherwise, you just go for the two shot and give it a turn. Uh, but as long as you're not at, like, kind of low health, basically, basically if you're going into Dragonite at near max health, you should be able to live whatever it's going to throw your way. Oh, okay. So you, do, you, do you set up... I guess you set up less... Do you set up less on Cedra, Or do you still set up to plus six? Um, I'd have to, I'd have to see what, uh, Etchy has written down. There may be an, uh, there may be an option to just set up to plus four instead of plus six. Uh, if you know you're not going to hit level 53, uh, in this case, I know that he does go all the way to plus six and then just, just gets the level right before Dragonite. I believe it's like literally the Pokemon before he gets it, uh, where usually you level up after the, uh, I think it's after this Gyarados and into the Charizard is when you see normally. Okay. But yeah, it was actually incredible because yeah. he didn't know. He didn't know he was actually going to hit level 53 going into <laughs> this. So that's the genuine reaction. reaction. And you see that he did make sure to heal to full before KOing the Cedra uh, because he didn't know. And if you don't know that you're going to hit level 53, then you're basically saying, okay, I'm going to have to two-shot the Dragonite at plus six because I'm not level 53. And he gets it anyways, uh, which actually saves him from having to open the menu heal the champ, uh, and yeah. heal going into champ. Yeah. Uh, does, Lance, was... does Lance heal? Does he heal his Pokemon if, he do, if you don't KO? I don't remember. No, wouldn't know. <laughs> Never been in that <laughs> okay. situation. <laughs> yeah. Setting up to plus six and going is kind of risky then because I guess you lose a turn to the heal. But anyway. Uh, another thing I'd like to note about this run is that it was done maybe like an hour after I finished my Usum run. Oh, really? Oh, that's so... why. Oh, yeah, because 4th uh, uh, Gen mentioned uh, something about two Gen 7 records, like, back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Pretty crazy. That is, that, is... that is wild. I always forget that this is a Gen 7 game. Uh -huh. also, e even before the, the Moundscape, though, this was still, like, just about world record pace, I guess. I don't know, like, something may have happened in between yeah. Giovanni split and the Mountscape happening. But being, like, five seconds ahead of Giovanni, Echi's no Mountscape's world record is really good. And that, I guess, it would have been just about pace. For it would have been, three, yeah, it would have been 301. 301 flat, give or take. Yeah. So like, I have to go back and watch the whole run still. I've only watched uh, from Victory Road and onward myself. Uh, but it is, I mean, obviously, Etchy is Etchy. He's just going to, he's going to go back to Let's Go every single time. Uh, and we knew it. And he was, he's obviously incredibly practiced and um, very thorough knowing, you know, what saves seconds uh, over the course of a run. And he had always been like, oh, I'm on 301 pace again. Um, like, even on mediocre runs, or as he would call, this run is okay. Mm -hmm. But if you string together a bunch of okay splits and let's go, I mean, you can really go pretty far and pretty deep into the game like that. And this is, again, one of those, this was very much an okay run, it looked like. Um, but this is also, from this week, essentially this week, week or two, uh, is the first runs that we've seen with the new uh, catch formula information. And it's really given a lot of the Let's Go runners, myself included, like a really big motivation boost to get back into the game and see how that knowledge is affecting the run. And for any percent, it's not a huge difference. We essentially just are going to buy a few extra great balls in the Vermilion shop. But you, now you know, like, oh, I only need a nice throw on a Nidoran male instead of having to wait for an excellent throw. So we're still trying to see if that's going to optimize uh, any of the catching cycles. Uh, but the Starmie section is all the same. Yeah, and actually just to go on to that, because it, it's going to be brought up a bit later in the podcast, but may as well bring it up now because it's the perfect time. Uh, Anubis and Kurt, I 
believe. I don't have the thing for... Oh, it's all in this thread, basically, where Anubis detailed pretty much everything about the Let's Go Pikachu Eevee catching formula. So, there's a lot Get of very... Get ready for math. Yeah, a lot, a lot of math, a lot of technical stuff in this. Um, but it's... Uh, anyone who is interested in Let's Go, and actually as well, because uh, Anubis followed up with some Sword Shield and I believe, was it some BDSP and Legends Darcy stuff? Uh, I think he's looking in, I think he's going to look into the Legends Arceus stuff, but I haven't seen uh, any of the threads yet. Yeah. Uh, but I know some, I know some BDSP uh, and Sword Shield catch rates were just kind of resurfaced. But we kind of knew about the like the if the opponent Pokemon is higher level than you, you get the you get the big penalty. Yeah, and for anyone who's watching the YouTube vod, I will leave this in the description below. But for anyone in Twitch, there's the the giant thread of it all. Uh, really interesting stuff. Um, the 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 TLDR of the thread and how it uh, how it impacts the Let's Go speedruns is that previously we did not think the second player's Pokeball choice mattered simply because, like, say you had a Ultra Ball and a Pokeball and the catch circles are either red, orange, yellow, or green. Well, if you switch the second player's Pokeball to a Great Ball or another Ultra Ball, it didn't affect the color, that circle color of the catched Pokemon. So we were like, oh, looks like it doesn't matter. And very weirdly enough, and I believe it's in that thread that you just posted, is that the color of the circle is only assuming you're doing a one controller catch. So it actually only looks at whatever the higher level ball is. But the catch rate formula is, is impacted by both ball choices and it essentially averages them together. So using an ultra ball and a pokeball is the same as using a great ball and a great ball. So with that knowledge, we're like, oh, that actually makes a difference in terms of our speed runs and in terms of the catch rate formula and just the the general knowledge of how likely something is to break out or not. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good summary, <laughs> Phil. Um, and like there's a lot of like you mentioned earlier as you've been doing some rerouting for aop i think maybe some other people have as well if my memory serves me correctly yeah i think the uh i think the catch rate formula knowledge um while it impacts the any percent run a bit i think the catch them all categories have been blown wide open as a result of this um quite simply we're just investing in a lot more ultra balls so instead of using Ultra Ball Pokeball uh, hand in hand, we're now using double Ultra Balls for really the second half of the run. And so we just have to invest in a lot more Ultra Balls. But now we know that the catch rates are significantly improved for all of those high level Pokemon, like the legendary birds, for example, that they're just going to be so much more consistent as a result of that now. Um, so I went through and rerouted some, uh, AOP stuff on the EV side. Uh, I know Joker and Amber did some work on the diploma side as well. And I'm sure there are plenty of others, uh, involved in the, um, let's go community that were also just kind of either following along or giving their inputs as well. And I think the catch them all categories are really just blown wide open and are, and are, prime for some big pbs uh myself included i went from a 544 in aop now to a 519 in the matter of just like a couple runs uh and part of that is just obviously getting familiar with more familiar with the game but part of it is also just the more consistent catches uh i think the big one uh, that is always asked is uh for the legendary birds with double ultra balls uh you are between 14 and 20 percent to catch on any given hit. Uh, 20% if you get an excellent throw on it, 14 if you just miss the circle or you don't get any identifier on it. Uh, but even with that catch rate, you're 50% plus likely to get a legendary bird in five hits. Which sounds great because I've had some 20 plus, <laughs> 20 plus ball yeah. Zapdoses before. So I think the consistency is really gonna get a lot better uh, on the birds. 
Yeah, and actually speaking of that, because like brought up in the background, because there was a run that I've missed, which is my apologies. Uh, Joker with the let's go Pikachu all attainable world record, a five ten forty nine, uh, using some of this information, I believe. So, yeah, this was this was part of like the reroute. You can mm. see him throwing double Ultra Balls in this case. Uh, he and I were talking after this run, and he's like, "Yeah, Articuno is still the worst," <laughs> which. Which it's no different than the others. I still think Zapdos is the worst just because it's more juke. You know, it jukes from side to side, whereas Moltres and Articuno just kind of sweep left to right. But there's just something about having to catch Articuno at the, like, the five-hour mark. And you're like, well, if it gets in first ball, this is going to be really good. And if it gets in 15th ball, uh, like what happened to me the other day, then it's not as good. Yeah. I think we'll we'll be seeing these times come down definitely over the the next few months. I think because again, there's a fair few people pushing this now. I believe like Joker. I mean, Joker is pushing for sub five prior to all this anyway. Edukit's talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you're specifically pushing sub five, but I know you you'll be pushing it. I I'm still gonna push a little bit farther because um, I I did get a five nineteen on the mm. EV side, uh, which is the fastest for that version. Uh, and that was on the physical cartridge, <laughs> which is really funny. Joker was just like, yeah, you're probably losing like five plus minutes minimum to physical cartridge. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Thanks. It feels great. Uh, but I would like to get down to like a low 5 teen or maybe into the 5 0 X um, for my skill and on the EV side. But yeah, I think the catch them all categories are are going to be pushed really hard uh, right now just because of the catch stuff. Just get lucky at the end of the day. Uh, you get lucky, and now it's more consistent to get lucky. These are going to be really fun. Yeah. And then, yeah, this is like your Let's Go Eevee AOP time, which is actually also second on the general overall uh, AOP leaderboards. Also, I want to point out, I found out why I didn't find these. Uh, so, the, again, a bit behind the scenes. The leaderboard roundup. For some reason, they just never came up. So I don't know why that was the case, but nonetheless, uh, apologies about that to uh, to you and Joker. But... Funny enough, this this split that we're looking at, um, I had the best combined Dratini find and Zapdos catch, nice. uh, and that really just set the tone uh, for that particular run. Like everything else was like okay. Again, you string together a bunch of okay splits, and you're doing good. And let's go. Uh, but that power plant split with the Dratini and the Zapdos was really, really good. And I'm going to have a hard time competing against that again. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a very, very difficult part of the run to try and catch up on. But either way, though, the, uh, the EV world record was not the only thing you did this month, was it? Because you also got the Brilliant Diamond 80% glitchless world record, a 320.49. Um, and again, I actually I'll let you beat keep that. going with this. Yeah, I, I actually uh, beat that already. Um, oh yeah, sorry. So this the... this time is your three twenty twenty three. That's just me not updating right. the dog. So, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, your no. current world record. <laughs> I've yeah, been so... slipping. I've been slipping this month. No, my no, all good. Uh, you know, the video that you're seeing is when I got the record at the three twenty forty nine, and then I think it was like the next day or two days later, I just did a slightly better run. Um, and same theory, like, all the splits were just okay. There, there wasn't anything that singularly stood out about the run as, like, oh, wow, this was, re this was really good, really fast, magic crit, nothing like that. It was just consistent, okay splits the whole way through the game, and then you, and that just resulted in that 320. This particular run does hit an optional, uh, on the way to Mount Cornet. Uh, so you have to do that funky movement on Route 207, uh, where you dodge a bunch of the runners and get to Mount Cornet on your uh, initial climb. Yeah, I mess up the movement, and I hit one of the trainers with, uh, like, a Geodude and a Starly, which isn't, like, a problem, but it was just like, well, that's kind of lame. Mm. But, yeah, and then uh, Mars and Jupiter is, uh, in fact, a time. <laughs> Uh, in this run, the Mars and Jupiter fight actually went well. I'm trying to remember what happened here. Because <laughs> when you see 
when you see Perugly and Skunk Tank on the field at the same time, uh, it's a bad time. Yeah. So, okay, so okay, so Kaza died in that one. So, yeah, like in, listen. In this specific case, what happened was you used Psychic on Skunk Tank. Yeah, I was gonna die anyways. Um, I I did misclick. I remember. Yeah. I I do remember misclicking uh, on that. So I was gonna try to psychic off the Perugly and then just take the getting KO'd by the Skunk Tank. Uh, so I only lost a turn to that mistake, but <laughs> Mars and Jupiter is a time. So to anybody that doesn't know, the uh, the double fight there is with Barry, and Barry's the problem in that fight. If he would literally not attack, you'd be able to handle the fight just fine. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I get to Flint, and you can see on my splits that I'm about 20 or so seconds behind. Uh, the only thing I know going into this is, A, I actually have a good speed Dialga, so I can go to plus 2 instead of plus 4 for Flint. So I'm saving a turn, but it's not enough. So with Dialga here, I have to go to only plus 2 defense instead of plus 4 defense. Uh, the... The Rapidash has Hypnosis and will either go for it or not when you wake up, like Full Restore wake up. Uh, if it goes for it, then you're just like, well, I have to go to plus four defense. Otherwise, you're just getting hit constantly uh, and you're at just too low of defense to survive uh, the Infernape's close combat. Uh, but here, I'm just like, okay, fingers crossed that on this turn that I get Flame Charge instead of Hypnosis, which I do... And it's just, it's this is how precise it is. At plus two defense, I live from 156 HP, a flame charge from the Rapidash, close combat from the Infernape, and mock punch from the Infernape. And I was at 158 HP when I clicked Dragon Balls. Uh, so bad. once I once I saw that I didn't get hypnosis after waking up. I knew I was going to save a lot of time, uh, and that was like the 25 second time save that I needed on this fight specifically. Yeah, cause, so if I just skip it a tiny bit just so we can actually see. Like, that just, okay, well, skipping it past me. Still yeah, 20 behind. seconds. Yeah. 20 seconds. And while you're still technically behind, you clearly have the time save after this point. Right, because the, the Dialga being fast enough. Uh, also saves me a turn on Cynthia. I believe actually two turns uh, because I only have to go again to plus two speed instead of plus four. And what happened, I think in the original PB uh, was I also had a heal on Cynthia like during the fight. So I was like, okay, I have two turns of time save on Cynthia. So as long as I hold my own on Lucian, I'm fine. Um, and yeah, it was just a massive come back in the Elite Four just because I had a good Dialga. Hmm. Yeah. Also, this Mr. Mime is a range if you have bad special attack. Funny story. Is it like, is it like a case of bad special attack or is this like, or was this the range where it's like, even like fairly good special attack, it's still a range? The, as I look at my notes here, um, the Dialga is always going to be a quiet nature because of Kaza's Synchronize. So you're already 50-50 to get a 31 IV in special attack. And I think the IV is like 21 or 22 special attack. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're that, like a guaranteed range. But even if you're zero IV, I think it's still 9 and 16 at worst. And in the 320-49 run, I think I was like 15 IV. So it was like a 13 or 14 and 16 range and I missed it. And it's just annoying. It's just like, wow, that's stupid that I had that bad of a roll. In this case, I did have enough special attack to guarantee it. Yeah, uh, one thing to note as well with the uh, the Dialga, it's got a set IV. Oh, not set IV, it's set nature because of the synchronized Kadabra, though. So. Yeah, same just as for... the Palkia uh, yeah. in Shining Pearl. Uh, but Palkia is still just objectively faster through the sequence because Stab Surf is so broken. Um, in fact, it's weird. weirdly enough, this fight, the Lucian fight, is the one singular fight where it is safer to be Dialga, but it is not faster. It is still the exact same number of turns uh, for Palkia as it is Dialga, uh, because 
Palkia has to do an extra X special defend, but only needs to go to plus four special attack. And Dialga needs to go plus six. And then all the other fights are more dangerous and slower <laughs> for Dialga, especially Flint. Yeah. Uh, but they're identical for Cynthia. So yeah, I saved, I saved the turn... I think I saved a turn plus a heal on Lucian. Uh, so I, I saved two turns there, and I saved another one to two turns on Cynthia. So I had this wild comeback in the Elite Four on this particular run, where I had one of the worst early games I've ever had, and I died in the uh, Mars-Jupiter fight as per normal. So again, this was one of those, like, this is okay. And I just strung all the splits together. Yeah. Just think, it, I mean, is there, like, any specific things that I don't know how much... Actually, did you... Uh, well, because I, I, I was having a look at head bulbs as well prior to, like, getting this run up. No head bulbs are in this. Which, by the way, do you have any plans to come back to this, head bulb? Uh, BDSP, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure when, because I have a lot of things that I play it right now, but... Um, True, yes. <laughs> but there is, there is intent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I... Yeah, I ran it as well. I think I'm at like a 331, so I'll probably come. I'm definitely gonna come back at some point. Yeah, but is there any any points that either of you want to bring up before we go into go into the Legends Arceus uh, block, the mini block, I guess? Huh. No, I'm good. I think I'm okay. Um, yeah. just Ooh, play more. Want... Let play more. Let's go because no, play so <laughs> shield. Goes... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just think uh. Yeah, the I, I do plan on coming back to Brilliant Diamond to try to get a sub 320, because I'm obviously so, so close. If I can get a slightly better early game or an actual good Mars and Jupiter fight, I think I can get it uh, without too much struggling. Uh, but man, Let's Go is just so, so tempting right now. Yeah. Actually, one thing I'd be remiss to uh, not mention, all of your Switch runs are on digital, uh, not digital, physical, aren't they? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm just old school. I like having, you know, a, the physical copy of the game to, like, put on my entertainment center. You know, I'm very cathartic like that. Um, but I don't let it, I don't let it, like, stop me. Uh, and I and I say that to anybody that is looking to get into Switch speedrunning. It's just like, hey, don't worry if you have a physical cartridge, but the digital cartridge is faster. Like, you can always just go for best times, which is way more fun than trying to grind out world records. So I always just try to beat myself. That's always the mentality I have going into it. Uh, thankfully, I think Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, the... I don't notice it nearly as much, if at all, the difference between physical and digital uh, copies of the game. Uh, but it is very noticeable for Let's Go uh, and Sword and Shield. Uh, Legends Arceus is, it has its moments, uh, but not as many of the moments. I think it's yeah. a very healthy mentality, t -Pat, and we'll applaud you for that. Yeah, yeah well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you should really do is actually get, like, a load remover, and you can combine them. Yeah, well, I mean, that'd be great. Like, I was in the middle of doing one first, Sword Shield, and then a million things. I'll get back to it eventually, baby. But anyway, Legends Arceus. We'll start with the first world record from Shady in the catch mall. This is the turbo world record. There's an 8.49.10. The first sub 9 run for uh, catch them all. Uh, for catch them all. So, very impressive. Uh, and there's still some like salt. Like, there's some room with this run in particular uh, for Shady to get a PB. Because there was some bad distortion look. There was... It was a 40 minute cobalt, which I believe is the maximum t amount of time before a distortion will appear. And then there was uh, followed up by a 25 minute one in Alabaster. So, quite unfortunate there. That's, that's an hour there waiting in itself. Uh, and then also, uh, one of the evolution items that you need to get is called the Pete Block, which is, mm. I believe, to evolve, Ursa, uh, to evolve into Ursa Luna. Yes. Um, Unfortunately, was not able to get one of them, so Shady had to do the entire Gone Astray questline, uh, accumulating into this moment, this the final part of it. I didn't know the Gone like because I never did this quest. The five like five part quest. It's so like it, it's so roundabout, dude. For, to get Ursa Luna, it's like yeah, you have to like get a, like a full moon or something, 
You gotta use the peep block at the right time. Yeah, I believe... Uh, I think it's the very last Pokemon. Like, it gets the peep... Right, Shady gets the peep block now, but it's the very last Pokemon, I believe, that uh, Shady goes for. I believe you can just... Oh, that's maybe a bit too far, yeah. Not the most ideal way of trying to look on a tiny screen there. Uh, okay, can't really find it, but basically I believe like right at the end is just like going to the camp, resting every night, or re uh, resting so it'd be a new night every night until it was the full moon. Yeah. So, not ideal, not an ideal what's evolution. The, what's the What's the month cycle on that? Is it a seven day cycle? For the moon to carry over. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I would not I, be I able to think, tell you that. I don't think it's twenty-eight days. I, I just think, just thinking about the game casually, uh, I don't think I've had to wait longer than seven, maybe a couple days after that. It's ten days, according to Halkri, who was very, very good at this game. Because uh -huh. I just remember doing it uh, casually, and I think I had to rest like seven days to be like, oh, full moon's out now. Alkiri in chat, which, if you did not know, is the other runner that we are showing because uh, of the non-Turbo Catch Mall World Record, the 8 and oh, an 8, 31, 23. Um, I'm going to apologize about this very quick summary this, for this Hulk, but it's, uh, it had a very good distortion look, but absolutely got bodied by Volo. <laughs> like, very much bodied, uh, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, I believe it was due to not having twice spiced radishes or revives. So the glade, like, so it was the Togekiss? No, it was the Pokemon before the Togekiss. That uh, it was a crit and got a defense drop, I think. I could, I could easily just go back and check. <laughs> yeah, like, it was 10 minutes of volo. It was, a, it was rough. Um, so. Yeah, I think it's the Spirit Tomb. What's the move? Because again, I'm not familiar with uh, this run in particular. It's been a while since I fought Volo. Um, so I'm just gonna briefly. We're gonna watch this and learn together. So Shadow Ball, all right? <laughs> Shadow Ball, because the defenses are combined. The defense yeah. starts to turn to normal. That doesn't uh... help. But yeah, I think if Hulk had got the or remembered to get the twice spice rashes, uh, radishes, not rashes. Um, which if you're um, which if you're unfamiliar, the twice spice radish uh is essentially like an X attack slash special attack. Uh it boosts the uh attacking power by fifty percent. There we go. Which is and, uh we know that in Pokemon, you know, setting up is very important. It is and, very important. And it's no different in Legends Arceus, even though the battle mechanics and system is quite a bit different than normal, it's still it's still a very important item to to need for this sequence, especially when you're fighting things that have so many Pokemon, like uh, like Volo does. Yeah, the dice of Volo came back, didn't have massive doubt, pulled some Gliscor, died again. Very, very unfortunate. I'd be very curious to see and hear about, learn about the like the evolution of how to handle this battle. Because uh, I think one of the original routes was like, get Cresselia and use Cresselia's really busted move, which is the, uh, it's the healing move that increases evasion. Oh. And it's like, yeah, just sounds... do that and get lucky. That, that's a move. That's a oh, move is it the really that. annoying one? Like, not Shelter, right? That's not that. Yeah, no. Shelter is, uh, Gudra's signature Lunar Blessing. move in okay, this. Okay, yeah. Original route was Cresselia's Luna Blessing. Lunar, yeah, that's the move that I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe I believe it's a move that um, is basically restore, and it gives you the evasion boost. Oh, that's so a troll! I would hate yeah. to be up against that. <laughs> it would. It was one of the most difficult fights I had casually in this game, where I was like, "Oh, I can't hit this anymore because it has the the obscurgeon effect." Also, the one funny thing for me, what Twitch fault, is the uh, the Stantler getting to kill the Garchomp. <laughs> Stantler, Stantler OP. Why don't you? Why don't we all just use Stantler? I'm so glad Stantler has an evolution in Legends Arceus. I think it looks so good. 
Yeah, not having revised is not fortunate. It was not ideal. Clearly. But, um, you know, it's, uh, are you, are you going to be, are you still pushing this? Because we could, like, we could, oh, I'm, like, talking to Hulk in chat right now, I guess. Um, are you going to push further for the sub 830? Because I remember, I do remember when possible. sub 9 felt like the, like the holy grail, and then you just get good, uh, you get d good distortion luck and good evolutionary items, and when everything comes together, it feels great. Well, like, what was it? There was, so, there was so many runs, I believe, that were like... Well, so many runs relative to the fact that this is a 9-hour long category. But being like... 9.04, 9.05, like, I feel like... Yeah, there were a lot of those. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's like 4 or 5, which is like crazy for a 9-hour category. Yeah, and the, I remember there were a couple runs where it was like, I'm easily on sub-9 pace, and then you get a 40-minute distortion, and it all just kind of unravels in front of you. And there were quite a few runs that were like that. I'm just so curious and so interested about the uh, the Legends Arceus catch em all run, because it, it just feels like a kind of more reasonable catch em all Like, if Let's Go catch em all you know, five to six hours is like very chill and like actually a pretty fun run but it's not like and then you see the other end of the spectrum like the uh, so, someone did like a fire red leaf green like 170 run it's just like that sounds like a nightmare well this is somewhere in between that where it's like <laughs> this is reasonable to get the i think it's 240 pokemon because you don't get the uh you don't get the two event pokemon which is the dark cry and the shaman if i remember correctly uh, but it that just feels like it feels reasonable, but it has its moments of like very stressful grinding. No 25 or 40 minute distortions in this run. That does sound disgusting in the that's, best uh, way. That's what you need. Yeah, the distortions, even from, even from what I know, plays a massive factor in this run. Yep. <sighs> Yeah, it's um when you when you enter an area, there's basically like another clock. In fact, you can see Halk's got the got his own timer in the top right of the screen uh, to track that. And a distortion uh, is predetermined to form after either five minutes, ten minutes, uh, twenty five minutes, or forty minutes. And yeah, you just get it either way. And if you like leave the area and come back or there are other like cutscene triggers that will reset the timer so you pretty much are just like i'm gonna do all the other things i can do in the area while i wait for this distortion to form because the distortions have uh poke there are some pokemon that only come out of the distortions like the fossils for example and they also drop uh some very rare items usually evolutionary items that's usually where i pick up most of my like uh what's like the 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 mag what's the magna a uh, mag mortar item like I uh, yeah. yeah it's like those are the items that you would find in the uh in the distortions without having to grind picking up satchels for enough of the like the rescue points oh uh, yeah to buy one or two of them gross yeah. uh, i just know that one of the fun strats in the game is that when you get banished from jubilee village uh, when the distortion sky comes out, the RBG sky, uh, it actually makes the five minute distortions slightly more likely to form. So in, while you're in those areas, you actually farm the distortions just because you're you just have that small RNG advantage. Uh, it like switches the percent chance of a five and ten minute distortion. And no weather. That's right. If you have a if you have a thunderstorm or a blizzard, it negates the distortion from forming. What? Very very silly mechanic, in my opinion. Uh, I wonder if that I wonder if that has something to do with the like the mass mass outbreak, uh, like uh, updates from the game, um, because like the mass mass outbreaks always appear in. The bad weather, like the thunderstorm weather. Hmm. 
Yeah, I I was not aware of any of that. <laughs> it, there wild. are some there are some very wild mechanics and yeah, I've been uh I've been messaged once or twice by Halk saying like, oh, this is just what we need. A weatherman to come back and play Legends Arceus. <laughs> I got a good chuckle out of that, especially learning the some of the mechanics. Like I'm interested enough to at least want to give this category a try, but it is it is a little daunting thinking like, oh, this is gonna be like my first try is gonna be 10 to 12 hours, most likely. So so it's very much like, hmm, how much do I really need to know to give this a try? Yeah, this, this like, any long category, really, is, is something you're going to have to set time for. Uh, I believe this does, yeah, this, like, this does qualify for the break. So I believe this run takes a break, at, like, around the six to six and a half hour mark. Yeah, I've been told that, uh, that breaks are allowed uh, yeah. for this category. Which is good. It's always good to have a break, especially for long categories. As someone who has done some long categories and not taken breaks during the, but uh, yeah, how break like yeah, it's important. You need breaks for this. <laughs> uh, but uh, I say I say that uh, that can, that's the end for the switch stuff. We need to quickly move on to the side game stuff. Uh, starting with Shigama's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, any percent, no quick save, no wonder mail, Japanese Wii U World Record, a 2.13.07. Uh, this run manages to get double chestnuts, so I believe that saves, or well, effectively saves like one extra go through the dungeon, if, if I believe it's like a three floor dungeon. Um, so that's always good, and it also gets frustration before Sinister Woods. Which, Alec in chat, I assume, will know what that means. I unfortunately do not. Saves at least five minutes. Uh, I'm assuming that's for the chestnuts. Maybe it's for the frustration. Either way. Uh, but that is uh, Shigama's world record there. There is also a world record for Shadow Phoenix DX, Pokemon Mush Dungeon Explorers of Sky, and you've sent no Wonder Mail English Wii U world record. This was a 5.17.59 and this run in particular uses Bulbasaur and Meowth which I feel like every time over like a mystery dungeon run or at least like with the Explorers of Time Explorers of Sky it feels like there's a different pairing every single time. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen that too on this podcast. And because like, and the specific thing that we're doing for this one is that it takes off the Skitty Totodile pairing off, off the top spot, which I believe was, uh, also Shadow Phoenix's time. So it's a, a twelve second PB from that. Uh, okay, so in Blue Rescue Team you can have duplicate moves. Another thing did not know, uh, but so you could technically have four frustrations. That is. That's another mechanic that's interesting. That's wild, even. My frustration is the most broken move in the game. Interesting. And then Bulbasaur is best because the move animations are extremely quick. So I guess is is there like a a true meta Hulk? I feel like we probably should really have had you come in on the podcast. But like, there's just a lot of stuff I didn't realize about this. Is it like a specific meta though, I guess, with like deciding the like the mains or like the uh, the Pokemon you choose? Because I assume there is, there's got to be to some level, like I, it's not, like, I believe like Skitty was used because it was like one of the most powerful within like combos. Yeah, like double slap, really good. <sighs> yeah. Um, but then this doesn't use... Skitty at all uses Meowth as his partner, which I assume might be, maybe it's for similar reasons again. Um, maybe normal Pokemon just busted. DMs are open. I should I should really be DMing you about Mystery Dungeon stuff. So yeah, taking into account like damage output, move animation speed, matchup, walls in the run, etc. Lots lots to think about. This seems like one. This seems like a nightmare to uh, to route, but I feel like. That might just be the, the an outside looking in where everything seems confusing. I feel like people had that same reaction for 
But even like the uh, like mainline Pokemon runes, we're routing them. But we'll say there is one last side game run, uh, Pokemon Rumble U. This is Kermit 117's any percent console no passwords world record, a 128.05, and taking this directly from the submission. This is not me being me. Uh, fairly sloppy menus, uh, but it was saved by. NFC figures being overtuned. So I I am not a I do not know anything about Rumble U. I've not played the games casually. Uh Teapot, have you played Rumble U? Uh, I have not played this. It uh it just seems like there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on just looking at the screen right now. Like yeah, the, the only side games I've played is uh, some of the Mystery Dungeon series myself. Uh, and all I know about that from seeing, I think it was Yoshi who did like a randomizer, like the like the maps have certain patterns and you can recognize those patterns. But I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen Rumble U at all. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Also, just uh, with Hulk in the chat again, uh, going back to the PMD runs. So it was Shady that was timing Bulbasaur's, uh, Bulbasaur's moves in the link set, and it's apparently like half a second faster than Ryulu's. Which was, I guess, one of the... which Well, yeah, which was one of the older... Older Pokemon that was chosen. Because I, I remember, I do remember Ryulu being one of... In at least one of the uh, past uh, runes that we have shown. So, yeah. That covers all the noted runes. Um, Ian, is Ian still there? I am. Hey, do you want to quickly go over the marathon runs? Whilst we have yeah, sure. One of the runs playing in the background. Yeah, we had quite a few marathons uh, this past month. We got quite a lot more coming up. Um, we're, instead of going through like watching videos on all of them, we're just going to highlight a few. Um. I think it works a little bit better. Uh, this is from ESA Summer 22, and this is Ava, uh, who did uh, XD Any Percent. Uh, I never watched this, but I did watch a very funny um, clip <laughs> when they were discussing uh, Magikarp and Gyarados. If anyone's seen that or knows what I'm talking about, you probably know. Uh, <laughs> so if anyone yeah, wants what, to... What Pokemon is a fish? Uh, is a So I, I no, call bird. this... I came into the like watching the the back end of the run because it was very. I like, started. I think it was at like five, like well after like the marathon, like just a bit behind schedule. But we started at around five in the morning, in, uh, in Sweden, so four in the morning for me. So catching the end of the run, it was it was a it was a fun run to watch. Um, I I do love Pokemon XT. <laughs> it is one of my favorite games. Uh, so there is maybe a bit of bias in there. Oh, soundtrack, so good, so good. Uh, Call the team as well. Just a great set of games. We need, we need a third one. We need a third one. But yeah, um, there was a couple of other runs as well uh, from ESA Marathon. Uh, Christ, yeah, uh, I'll kind of just talk. Yeah, just, yeah, you want me to just kind of yeah, if you want to go ahead, here? yeah. Yeah, sure. So uh, we had at Finrun Summer 22, we had Koivu Klappi, who did Red Glitchless Classic. At Marathon SGES 2022, I think that's a Spanish uh, marathon. We yes. had Zebus do PMD Explorers of Sky Rando 10 Dungeon Blitz. Uh, Diego Lazo R4 doing Omega Ruby Any Percent. And Zebus again doing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I don't know what BRT is. Blue Rescue uh, Team. Blue Rescue, Rescue Team, team. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I, I got it. <laughs> uh, 80% no quick save, no undermail. And then at Australia Speedrunning Marathon, we had Worcester do Heart Gold, any percent Manipolis. Uh, also at ESA Summer 22, we had Chris Sosaurus do Legends Arceus, any percent. And Cruel do Trading Card Game, any percent no ace. And then finally, we had a red any percent glitchless race at Summer of Speedrun Love with Nox Gaming 03 versus the Stall Bay Bay. Uh, so, congrats on your marathon runs. It's always uh, fun to show those off uh, to a wider audience. 
Uh, we've got quite a lot of marathons coming up um, this month. Um, not to mention, yes. we'll talk about the PSR marathon at the end. But uh, we have uh, RTA in Japan, Summer 22, uh, a Japanese marathon. Uh, we have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, No Quick Save, No Wonder Mail Race, Icarus versus Nat. Um, we have Ranger Any Percent on the 12th of August. I should probably let you guys know. You can see the times here, but uh, we have Midori Kaze, Ranger Any Percent. And then uh, all these runs are actually close to each other. Um, and then Wykrin Stadium Gold and Silver. Uh, yes. See there, the times you see on the screen are in uh, British time. So uh, apply the time difference accordingly. So minus five hours if you're in Eastern time and uh, minus eight hours if you're on Pacific time, etc. Uh, there's a French marathon as well, and, and I'll try to do my French ac do a French accent. I do have I can speak French somewhat. Encyclopédie du speedrun. Uh, yeah, I haven't Tamo read to do that the entire French. time when it's been French. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's really that was a tough. That, that was a tough word to pronounce. Uh, Hem Tamo read any percent glitch list the 12th of August at noon British time. And then one and done a thon season two. We have Corva May doing learn with Pokemon typing adventure. That'll be that'll, that'll be, be a meme. Time. That'll be something. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, didn't she just get record in that game? We could highlight that on the uh, side games here. All right. So the, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe in the round. Maybe it might be in the roundup. Yeah. It <laughs> is. It is classed as a. I think it's. How's it? It's mobile and mini games. And those don't come up on the leaderboard roundup, unfortunately. Okay, that that's fair. That's fair. If if Thank we included the them, <laughs> it would make it. Oh god, it it would make the leaderboard bot just take way too long. It's getting because of all the categories uh, that people have been thinking of, which is great, but it's it's making the leaderboard bot take over forty minutes at this point to go through. Uh, just just to promote uh, May's run yes. for the one and done a thon, I, I have seen her uh, do some of these runs on her channel recently, and it really is a good meme. Like, this isn't like just some silly, like, like leave the game alone and just do some optimizations. Like, it, you know, it's typing, it's skillful, but it, it is pretty funny, uh, and it is mostly done with either a British or Australian accent. Uh, it's just there's something charming about it, but I it, think it'll be a like a really good meme run. It's it's a British accent, at least for the the version May has. I yeah. don't know if the Australian <laughs> version has a different voice accent. I don't believe it came out in the US or like in the North America. I region. I couldn't I couldn't remember it or recall it from whatever years ago. This is my first time seeing it, and it's, it's just it funny. I always get a good chuckle. It's it's a it's a very interesting run. I would I would recommend watching this one. Yeah. As Deep Out also recommends. Yeah, sorry. It's just such a weird premise for a game because you're taping on a keyboard that you will never ever use in the real world. Yeah, it's the it's only just, game. Just, I find it very interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, the it's the only game because it's I believe I had I think May said it's the game cartridge has a Bluetooth chip in it, and that's how <laughs> the keyboard connects to the DS, and it's the only game. That's that's really interesting, actually. It is it's interesting? It's one of those very. I don't want to. Say, I, who who made it? It was. I think it might be the same people who made Pokemon Coliseum. The next thing. Oh, oh, I kind of know who that is, but not really. yeah, it's those. Yeah, it's the same studio. It's just like I don't know. It's it's wild. It's again. I keep saying wild, but it's one of those wild things. <laughs> yeah, genius writing. Yeah, there we go. thank you, thank you, Groucho. Uh, yeah, uh, Iron. Okay, if you want to carry on with the marathons. Yeah, absolutely. So we have BSG Annual Twenty Twenty Two. Quite a few mar Pokemon speedruns featured here we have first up war tab x pokemon x any percent on the 15th of august at 248 british time and then on the 17th of august we have a couple runs we have sl weed 
snap any percent um, at 642. Uh, no hands OP doing sword any percent at, uh, at 722. British time. And then on the 18th of August, we've got two runs. Again, we have Jimmy doing soul silver any percent glitchless at uh, just past 2.30 a.m. British time. And then later in the day, we have Stocky doing Prism, which is a gold silver ROM hack uh, any percent on the 18th, or sorry, at about 10.30 uh, in the evening. Yep. On the 19th, we have a race of any percent red, any percent glitchless, no instant text with, with Araya, Legend Eater, and SL Weed at 6.30. And then finally, on the 20th of August, uh, just before 2 a.m., uh, British time, we've crafted doing Platinum any percent glitchless. Yeah, there's a a lot of Pokemon runs this time at BSG, which is good to see. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, I think the, the most Pokemon runs in the marathon for a, a fair bit that isn't specifically Pokemon related. So, yeah, that is, yeah. that's always good. And, and it's, a mass, it's a very wide range of games as well. It's not like in fact, I think all of them are from. Oh, aside from Soul Silver and Platinum, all of them are from different generations or are a, a ROM hack, which is again is very good. Yeah, nice to see. I see a massive range be uh, presented and shown. On to the Definitely. next one. Uh, the next one, yep, is Triple S4, another Spanish marathon. We have only one run here. Captain Bubolo doing Diamond Any Percent at 4.17 on the 19th of August. Then we have um, a Korean marathon, Super Speedrun Marathon 2022. We have uh, two runs, both by Olavi. First up, Red, Blue, Catch em All at uh, 3.21 a.m. And then Red, Blue, Reverse Badge Order, so two very glitched categories of the original games. Uh, both those runs, I believe they're going to be, it looks like they're back-to-back, because -back, the second one is not long after the first. Mm. Yeah, back-to-back. -back. Yep. And then we have Flame Fatales 2022. We have two uh, runs here. We have Kaguya Nikki doing Legends RCS Beat Cleavor. Uh on the 26th of August at 6.07 p.m. And then the next day at exactly the same time, uh, yep. well, uh, we have enough. a race <laughs> a, a race between Sanjan and, and May doing Omega Ruby versus Alpha, Alpha Sapphire. That'll be a good one. Uh, it's a well. rematch. It's, it it's is a rematch, a rematch between those two. It is a rematch. Oh, nice. It'll be... who, won the, who won the first one? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, ju I just know it's a rematch. Nice. Yeah. It is also, it is wild that they are both of their, well, assuming the schedule goes well, or sticks to the schedule at the same, at the same time on different days. That's wild. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and then we have Midwest Speed Fest 2022. I believe this will be an in-person marathon. If it could work. Yes, or, they've been doing the very for a least while. hybrid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have first up, we have Conception doing Pearl Any Percent Minipolis at 1.30 UK time on the 28th of August. And then later in the day, uh, we have Halkiri doing Legends Arceus Any Percent. 5.05 PM UK time. And then the last marathon before PSR Marathon, uh, other other than PSR Marathon, is Speed Docs a thon 2022, weekend number two. Uh, Conception again running Pearl Any Percent Minipolis on the 2nd of September at just before 11 p.m. UK time. And then Spicy Buns doing new Snap Any Percent. Um, pretty much looks like almost directly after Conception's run, uh, just past midnight. Yes, directly uh, after. And then, and finally, and then finally, yes. we have big one Pokemon Speedruns Marathon 2022. We're not going to go through all the runs. Um, yeah. We've got a good representation of all the generations, including side games and ROM hacks. So this will be a really great event. Um, yeah. The dates it's running again are I don't. Oh yeah, 20, 20th of August uh, through to depending on your time where you are in the world through the twenty third of August. So. 
Uh, yeah. Completely unplanned, both guests are doing runs. <laughs> and Headbob, in fact, is finishing like, off with closer. the last <laughs> Yeah. What an honor. What an honor indeed. Get to follow on after Bootleg Ash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a funny category. Yeah, that's that. That will be one of the categories. <laughs> it is in one fact of the one rooms. of the categories <laughs> of all time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, don't my, miss my, that. Yeah, Sorry. my run's gonna be the brilliant diamond run, and uh, I did submit with the music on, so we do get to listen to the intended music of the game. In the run, even though it loses like 10 minutes, but it'll be more enjoyable for a marathon that way. Yeah. This... Oh, yeah, I just got around to watching uh, Etiquette's run from GDQ, and yeah, it was definitely more enjoyable with the music. So we actually did not plan the whole, like, talking like golf co commentators during the Gardenia fights. Like, it just oh, kind of yeah, happened. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we literally just did that on the spot. That was not planned. <laughs> um with uh with uh BSR Marathon. This is this is good, at least in my opinion. Maybe a bit biased on the scheduling team for this. But there is like a good at least in my opinion, mix of the different generations. Aside from uh the the three D S Gen seven runs, that's one thing that's that is yeah. missing from the main line. No one submitted it, so it's <laughs> it, yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> but a good mix of races, there's a uh, like, yeah. uh, both inside and main. Well. Wait, yeah. I'm running XY. You said yes. 3DS main series games? Gen 7, oh, yeah. Gen 7. No. Oh, Gen oh, yeah, 7. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Gen okay. 7. Gen 7 on the 3DS. Yeah. Like, Sun Moon. I, mean, I, might have just, I might have said 3 I might have just said 3DS in general, because I am a bit of an idiot. But, uh, no, yeah. Uh, Gen 7 everyone 3DS. Always, everyone always forgets that Let's Go is Gen 7. It's why I specifically said Gen 7 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> but oh maybe that's what it was okay i understand that yeah. is there any particular run that is not your own i will ask each of you this that you are looking forward Ooh. to uh, well let me outside see. of gonna, your own ignore I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look i'm gonna look up the schedule uh, in detail here so see, i've been running because i'm commentating it yeah so maybe because i mean i'll i'll give my hmm. personal favorite as well, I'm very much looking forward to the uh, the Coliseum four way race. No yeah, that, that's definitely top three for me in terms of what I want to see. Yeah, no snags, lava, uh, broken all, and even bay leaf all going against <laughs> each other. <laughs> so that that's one of my personal favorites. I if you have one off the top of your head again, not counting yours. Uh, yeah, no, the Kalo is definitely up there. Um, I've been playing a lot of Sword and Shield recently, so I'll give a shout out to the, the Trade Alt main race as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just, just yeah, I played the what? game quite a bit. I just a lot, I like the music in that, in that game, so. What a great diversity of runs in this marathon. It's going to be so exciting. Deep out our head, Bob. I'm oh. going Throwing this question I, to you. I was gonna say you 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 really sold me on the uh the Coliseum race. I'll have to at least try to catch a little of that before I have to go to bed. Uh because that's uh it's pretty late considering oh, yeah, my work that's schedule. A, that's, a late, that's a pretty but, late one, yeah. Um I was also gonna say the trade alt main race. Um uh, not to spoil anything, but it is uh it'll that'll be a very fun race, uh having talked to some of the runners there. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll just uh, I'll throw my name just out at the uh, the other race, uh, the Heart Gold Soul Silver Manipolis race. Uh, always think it's uh, very much fun to see the category. Gyarados uh, own, and the, that's such a it's a very good race category as well, considering the variance in the early game with the Kulava, uh, the variance with actually catching the Gyarados, and of course the red fight can just be the great equalizer for anyone so like no one's no one has a safe lead in that race like you have to beat red to win that race because you can go in there with a five minute lead and still lose and then head bob all right let's see um <laughs> also just to give a shout out as well because last marathon was in 2020 
so the back to back to back new Switch games that have been. Yeah, I was actually about to say I, was, I think Legends Arceus. I'm gonna be really excited for. Yeah. Yeah, and they're yeah, all three of those games are back to back, which is I don't know if that was intentional. Uh, but um, it's a nice kind of way to start things off. Other than, and obviously, Black is a great run too. But yeah, those three runs early in the marathon is going to be nice. I mean, like anybody that's going to watch the Legends Arceus run, and I've said this about anybody that's watched Halk or Shady do marathon runs. I mean, those are the two runners that have brought that game yeah, to a absolutely. level that we did not think was even possible for Legends mm -hmm. Arceus. So to see literally the best two players run that game head to head is going to be a big time treat for everyone. Yes, indeed. indeed. All right. So uh, I would go into the cool things section, but we already went through the uh, the Anubis stuff earlier. So we'll go straight onto the leaderboard roundup. Um. Feel, as always, feel free to mention any runes that happen to pop out. Uh, for example, 20th for Nerdy Nerd 32 with Pokemon Red any percent glitchless, a 147.30. They are happy with that. Yep. Yeah, big props to the schedule makers, Sizzle. Big props to Sizzle, to be fair, because uh, Sizzle had the grueling task of... Uh, Actually fitting all the runes together. So shout out to Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess the scheduling too would help a lot that we used Oengus as well. Yes, I shout out to Oengus as was... well. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely shout out to Oengus as well. Not having to convert all the time zones. Like I believe past marathons did. But yep. Yeah. Uh... 10th place for Grogear in any percent glitch list for Pokemon Yellow, a 155.33. And then as well, 6th for Minnow, any percent glitch list classic, a 207.32. Uh, took it, uh, having, having a bit of a gold silver moment this month, it seems. Uh, 31st for. Yeah, eighty percent glitchless, a three twenty three thirty nine, and then three DS really VC good, world like record. <laughs> right, three DS yeah. VC world record. <laughs> or uh, yeah. Oh right, yeah, that's the same. That's the same run, yeah. I... If there's ever a way for Tucker to try and get everyone on three, like them by a three DS, I feel like Tucker will do it. <laughs> Fair play, fair play, Tucker. And then, yeah, eighth in Minipolis with the same run. Just a godly Toto, apparently, or a god Toto. If, if it happens, you gotta take advantage of it. You gotta be good enough to do that, so. Still, still full credit there. Absolutely. Uh, seventh place for Wave uh, in any percent glitchless Sapphire, a two hour 54 second run. And then second on the emulator leader ball for keeping it icy. Oh, keep yeah, yeah, keeping it icy. I said that correctly. I'm surprised I did that. Uh, a two hundred four twenty one. Eleventh for Gons or, or Gonzi on the eighty percent Japanese leader balls for Fire Red Leaf Green. A two nineteen forty nine. And then fifth for Macwing Elite Four Round Two. A uh, great comment. A three day one thirty one. Oh, I missed more oh. psychics than mega kicks. I I think I know where he would have missed. Oh no, I haven't oh, seen no. his run. <laughs> but uh, look, right? fifth place at three thirty one. That is wild. At times, to, yeah. To considering that, like a month or two ago, there was only one run that was it at that time. Yeah, not like. Okay, because then there's also on the emulator side there is uh there is Dan and Dan with the three twenty seven something. Yes, thirty six I think. Could just be just pulling that out of my. Yeah. You know what? Back wing three twenty seven thirty six. Yeah. Three twenty nine. And the last two pace. months, like Sorry. best time was other than Poker Guys was. 
at worse than a 331 yeah. which is mock his current time so yeah yeah and then just mark winning chart saying that was apparently a 329 pace heading into mewtwo so that is a bit of a shame but also still a very good time I'm guessing you missed a lot on Lorelei, Mockley. Yeah, that would that would be the only place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, again, because, like I mentioned earlier, it seems like there is some runes that are missing for one reason or another. I did rerun this this morning. Not this morning. Uh, like a couple of hours before the podcast. So there may be some times as well that are just being missed. Uh, all use for that. But uh, 13th for Vincento, a 236.10. I feel like I saw Vincenzo or heard that Vincenzo was on a better pace. I don't know if that run finished. But Vincenzo has been Old on one. the Emerald grind for a good while now. Might have, might have gotten a better one, actually. Let's take a look. In the meantime, though, uh, as we keep going, uh, Etienne with the 105.26 in any percent, the Diamond Pill, or the non Pill specifically. Pokemon yeah, Vince Platinum. got a uh, 234.20 yesterday. Wow, nice. what a good time. Yeah. Been putting in the work. Definitely been putting in the work. Took back Australian record from... Vin or no, I don't think... I don't think Jesse ever got it, but... Never. Ascending to gold game status, indeed. Indeed. Um, 3DS specific console runs. Uh, God, though. Took a rat. I'm assuming this was on a 3DS. Uh, Platinum 80% glitchless, a uh, 339.36. Monkey root, I assume. I definitely doubt that it was on a 3DS. <laughs> Manipping on. This is a Tucker we're talking about still, though, apparently. I mean, Manipping on 3DS is really difficult for Gen 4 and 5. If Tucker is all, here. Is all I know. Third place as well for Bouncy uh, in the 80% category. Two forty six forty seven. Oh, it was on DS. Yep. Fair Talk enough. I mean, if, yeah. I assume for the reasons that Head Bob said. Mm -hmm. Um, Rubentus in chat, fourth place in any percent glitch was hard gold soul silver. A three thirty four forty five. I assume Very with nice. the comment that uh, that meant Rubentus reached their goal. Or just was finally PB'd. Uh, eighth for affected hmm. ashes, a three forty one at fifty five. Five hundred five hundred attempts. Apparently. Oof. Thanks. Congrats on that then. Seriously. Hmm. Uh, mentioned Dexy's times earlier. Uh, and then the seventh and eighth in any percent for Tucker and Line. Six second difference. A two eleven oh four for Tucker, and a two eleven ten for Line was here. The only black white run, any percent English on emulator, Wolf Gaming, uh, 2203, a 41601. Busy month for Tucker. Um, white to challenge mode English, uh, fifth place with a 31719. Uh, XY, we mentioned head bobs run earlier. Zypotic in 11th with a 34750. Tucker again with a 359.02 competency. And then in 25th, uh, Rubens is just a bit behind with a 359.48. Uh, but both of them for the uh, for the three uh, for the three years competition in chat. Rubentus Tucker. I don't know if you were both doing that or not. I don't just... think they're gonna do Gen 7, so I doubt it. Oh, there is a prize for Individual games. Oh, time, yeah, yeah. That's true. Nope, just X. Fair enough. Uh, do, do, do. You for Omega Ruby, Daniel uh, 0114 in 23A30209. Uh, Emma, I'm not going to try and pronounce Swedish <laughs> names. In 2730631. And then <laughs> in 30th, we have. One David J with a three ten twenty four. In Alpha Sapphire, we have Fortunate with a twenty uh, ninth place time of three fifty four fifteen. And then on Emulator, Daniel win uh, in sixth with a three o two o nine. 
that is apparently the same. I guess they... Should that be allowed? I feel like that shouldn't be the case. If it is the same, it um, might have to go at the same time, to be fair. I don't know. But... Hmm. I don't know. That is one for the leaderboard mods. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pokemon Sun Moon, uh, 10th for Emma in 90%, 3, 34, 33 on 3DS, the old 3DS specifically. Fourth place for Japanese 90% on new 3DS for Yukisai, a 5, 42, 51. And then world record for actually for the 3DS, the old 3DS, um, Gon, uh, Gon Z with a 6, 0, 2, 49. Then on the emulator, Daniel uh, zero one one four with a fourth place time of a five thirty six ten. Once again, we mentioned head bulbs run earlier, but fourth gen gamer Josh with the five forty three thirty five putting putting him third, and then Primal Pizza from fifth with a five forty six twenty five. Those are all good times. Yeah, these those are all good times. And then on the. Original 3GS Cypotic in third with a 6, 11, 16. And he has since gotten a 557, which I think is um, barely not sec uh, first place. It's like pretty close. Uh, yeah, Pulse's time is a 555, 26. I'm very happy it has it there. I would not know that off the top of my head. Um, 3GS conversation though is definitely being uh, like breathing. I'm not going to say breathing life life into it because people were running the 3ds runs before um but it's definitely given it got it more activity which is good to see it's going on through till the uh the 11th of november is it yeah basically scarlet violet uh yeah scarlet violet. yeah so plenty of time to get your runs in if you want to join plenty of times you can just record your 3ds you do not need to have the 3ds capture card um, but anyway, on to the, the non-3DS Gen 7. Uh, let's go Pikachu Eevee. Fourth place for Kick and Run. A 303.18 in any percent no mount skips. That's a very good kind, uh, very good time. Mm -hmm. But a, I believe a fairly new runner. Yep. Started with Let's Go. Very impressive. Yeah. Um, mentioned that earlier. T-Pat in fifth with the, well, you've beaten the time, but... Still recognizing yeah, gotta... your 530.55. You got yeah, your... that was the uh, the culmination of the reroute uh, and getting a 14 minute PB on that day and then have since improved to a 519 since. Yeah. So, and then I don't know if Kick and Runs improved by their time, but at least with this, a sixth, uh, a sixth place time with a 531.01. Uh, sword and Shield, uh, any percent sword, English, no turbo, 1.2 plus. Um, Our Sigma with the 27th place time, a 4.23.37. Uh, on Shield, with the all the same stuff, Oriota in 12th with a 4.21.04. Uh, Gonzi with the 5th place. Gonzi's also had a busy, busy month. Tucker and Gonzi. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, fifth with a four twenty four thirty six, uh, and you percent with DLC on Swords. You decide in second with a three fifty nine twenty seven, breaking the sub four. So congrats there, and then Pierjo with the fourth place time of a four hour thirty four second time, and then on Shield Gonzi with a fifth place time of four nineteen fifty eight. Took her again. I feel like I shouldn't be surprised at this point. Um, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, Shining Pearl specifically, no turbo, a 344.09, apparently bad, but I wouldn't, it's not that bad. Yeah, he didn't put too much time into it, maybe put like a couple of days, I think, and then stopped. Yeah, that is fair. Uh, so fifth, yeah. Ooh, uh, but yeah. Fifth place for Fury, uh, a 329.21, and then... Low D complex with a 19th place time of 429.59 using the oh. Scyther route, I assume. Also, I just want to say a special shout out to 
Fury for creating the auto music uh, feature uh, that you can run oh. while playing uh, BDSP. It's basically like a Java program that will essentially just play the correct themes in the areas of the game that you're at. So if you want to have the BDSP with music experience, uh, but still want to go for top times in the leaderboard, uh, you can just use the tool that he's made. Uh, it is very, very well done, uh, and it's very well tested, uh, and it works works pretty good. Um, it's like it lags by like a second or two uh, when you enter new areas because it has to like read your screen. Mm. But it's actually it's such a cool um, feature that somebody in our community has like gone out of their way to uh, to basically give people a option to play with music but still go for top time. So. Uh, very cool, very cool little thing. Yeah, it, like could be because it was, uh, you know, a couple of months now, I think, at this point. But we could be like could be as well in the last podcast if you want to have a more, more in depth look or more in depth explanation, I guess, from Etiquette, I think, would be the person because. Yeah, he uh, he worked with Etiquette uh, yeah. pretty extensively because he was the first to really try out that tool. Uh, and if Etiquette ever comes back to it, I believe you would hear him use the tool. Yeah. Also, I remember specifically last month there was a an interesting tale about the one that minor difference between Brilliant Diamond and Shining oh, Star. Yeah. Which again, On yeah. Uh, if you yeah, Spear Pillar is actually a mirror image between the two different versions. So next time you see the games, look for like look at the actual columns and the pillars and see how they're they're flipped in the two versions. So and then also uh in fifth place, sticking with uh, BDSP or with Shining Pills specifically, you know we know with the 35533 on the Japanese turbo boards. Uh, onto Legends Arceus, any percent, 20th for Nemeless 22, with a 513.23.65. That point six five is very important. <laughs> uh, and then 37th for Taka Rob, a 944.37. Apparently a blind attempt, so I assume if they're well, based on the comment. Definitely want to improve their time. So, good luck to them. Then, we didn't mention Shady's uh, second place no turbo time. That was a 904.48. Um, as it says in the comment, it's technically obsolete, at least in Shady's eyes, with the uh, the turbo run. Uh, from, from my understanding, there's not much difference between turbo and non turbo. Oh, there's not enough of a difference, and I believe they're having a discussion about that at the moment in the Switch Discord. So, maybe these boards will be combined soon, who knows. Uh, but anyway, fourth place for Blood Dirk, a 948.06. Um, Pokemon Stadium, Mysticore, with a fourth place time in complete round one, English, a 609.26. Uh, Pokemon Snap. A uh, fair few switch runs, uh, because that is not new this month, it was new last month to the Nintendo Switch Online expansion. I don't... Is that the is that the name of the, the thing that also brings in the N64 games? If anyone happens to know. Yeah, I don't, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Uh, either way though, New Snap is... Uh, not New Snap. New Snap is already on Switch. Old Snap, effectively, is now on the Switch as well. Uh, second place for Swedish Fish Nin oh, Swedish Ninja Fish, a 24-35. Third place for Sig, uh, a 25-26. Uh, mentioned it last month. Uh, oh, CC Neverender mentioned it last month in their run. The Switch version is not good. <laughs> it is not good. Uh, it's not recommended to run that if you are able to run it on the N64 or... Or emulator, I guess. I believe emulator's much more consistent. Or at least is much quicker. But 100 percent world record though for Akafuku. Uh a 2849. 
And then a few seconds behind the second Swedish Ninja Fish with a 28.56. Second third with a 30.24. Curious Ghost, uh, Curious Ghosty, I, I assume is that is how that is going to be pronounced. A 33.31 fourth. Cynical Fate in fifth with a 36 flat. And then Marco Kuzi, oh, no, Marco Kuzui in sixth with a 107.31. New snap, 5th place for Pwned Noob, a 23404, which was a dearest PB, or there may have been a dearest PB before this one. Either way though, uh, recently just coming back to the game because Pwned Noob is running a new snap in the marathon, in the PSR marathon. Yo, 5th place for Shadow Koivu. Uh, with a 1 minute 49 second time in Battle CD RTA Metrono. One of my favourite runs. Uh, we mentioned Shigumu's world record earlier, but in third place, Pi3366 with a 218.25. Fifth place for Ponzu24 with a 220.22. And then in sixth, what's a 30.10? With a 22227. Uh, all in the 80% no quick save, no win the mail Japanese Wii U category. Quite interesting to see a fair few runners doing that all in the same month. See if there's like, I don't think there's any correlation between them looking at the run dates. So, but still, that's cool. That's very cool indeed. Uh, third place for Yimo with a. 51947 in Mystery Dungeons Explores the Sky and he said no one to mail English Wii U. Ian, what is Pokemon Genesis? It's a pretty old ROM hack. I hadn't really heard of it too much, but uh, yeah, Next Level of Memes submitted it. Um, I had a look at it earlier. It's a pretty interesting run. You kind of you start with I don't even remember what your starter is, but you quickly get a Talo and then switch to Lotad, and then switch to Geodude. So yeah, I think and I think you end up evolving. I'm not sure if you ends up becoming a Golem or it stays as a Graveler, but um, the the strats for the Elite Four were very interesting. I don't know if you want to try to find something on that. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Look. Let's have a look. But there's a really there's a, there's a really interesting strategy. I think. Oh no, no no! I know exactly what it is. It's really wild. Um, I think it involves Baton Pass. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> so uh, set up with Celebi and then Baton Pass because it has Dragon Dance. And then Spore to kind of. Obviously, Spore is a good move for because it's one hundred percent accurate. But yeah, pretty much the strat is. I don't know whether like Celebi could be used instead. Um, but. Pretty much it's just used to set up dragon dances and then you baton pass out and then baton pass passes on those stat ups to the next pokemon and that's then, cool. you, and then cool. you just yeah obviously this is like the first run that they've done and i don't know whether it could be improved anymore but or whether they're working on it any further but uh, it's definitely an interesting strategy for sure Yeah, it's not a strategy. I didn't even know Baton Pass it keeps the uh Oh yeah. It keeps, it like, all the setup. Yeah, there we go. Oh he does have a golem, yeah. So apparently you can get golem. You can get the trade evolution without trading. Or maybe it's I don't think it's I don't think it's a traded bond. No, it's not. It has a nickname. And then apparently there's no, there's, yeah, there's no manips in this either it's a, it's a fire red hack so right. um yeah because i was just thinking all the pokemon also had lumberries i assume in preparation for that butterfree <laughs> but yeah that is that is quite an interesting like that's some interesting routing uh pokemon snake would yeah, we, we talked about that one. Yeah, we talked about that month, month, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so Lime, Lime started looking at it, and then I remember I looked at it years ago. Didn't really get too far in routing, but he kind of inspired me to, to look at it further. And this one's actually been nipped, so I actually been nip the main the uh, the main use after he used it. Started using it after about an hour into the run, and uh, it's a pretty rare main. So the amount these the 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 IVs aren't fantastic, but at least it's consistent. So um, it's a uh, fairly consistent run, but there's uh yeah there's still some tricky spots. So I just did like one run with the Manip and there's uh there's a probably a little bit of improvement that could come, but it's a very dry run, at least like at certain certain points, but yeah. A bit of a shame there, but can't be helped, I guess. Uh Poker Clicker. One five one Pokemon auto clicker codes. John H. Crossley with the world record a one fifty nine fifty seven point five zero nine. Congrats there. Pokemon Radical Red, uh, any percent normal slash codes. Um, first place for Qtora, a 420.06. Uh, do you know why? Like, do you know much about Radical Red? I've been following the routing. I haven't. I haven't played it. Um, this is actually really interesting. So Peter did their run about the same time as Qtora did, and they used completely different. They did. They routed it separately. Um, oh. With um, yes, yeah, so they're not. They didn't really. They did some stuff similarly, but obviously, like if you're if you're looking at routing, like completely individually, uh, you get slightly different uh, strats. This this run, obviously, if anyone's familiar with this, this is kind of like a a Kaizo hack. Um, good for like nuzlocking and that kind of thing. Um, this is a run that you can get pretty much enter in some codes to get like. Like unlimited candies and um, I think perfect IVs on on your mons. Um, so um, you pretty much and there's level there's level caps as well. So you can't just get a level 100 mon and then just blitz. Um, there's like level caps. Uh, the strats are kind of interesting for it. I haven't I've been following it slightly, but uh, uh, it's very very interesting run. And then there's apparently some skips that people have found as well, which I don't know how. Uh, consistent they are, but you could do some weird trainer skips using like the Dex Nav, as this is based on the complete Fire Red upgrade, which is like a newer base for Fire Red ROM hacking, and there's some neat quality of life uh, later gen improvements that have been added. Um, so we might see this come down a bit more. We might see some interesting new routing done uh, later on, but uh, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty interesting, um, unique run for sure. Something perhaps to look forward to then. Uh, Pokemon Rumble Weekend Edition. Video percent normal. RDA with a world record of 33.52 there. Um, category extensions. New world record for any percent glitches, no instant text. So I assume the race category, effectively. Uh, but right with, in first with a 147.59. And then in sixth for Malva. Or a 149.46. They present no item underflow. World record for Araya, a 1952. And then Genesis in fourth with a 2030. Those are some choices of custom starters. Pikachu, uh, oh man. Pikachu, Dugong, and Lapras. Lapras is uh, Lapras is a bit better than I would have expected. Maybe Dugong's this is my lack of yeah, Dugong as well. Actually, yeah, that is very surprising to me. With not knowing the stats of Dugong, to be fair, it doesn't. It just doesn't seem like a fast Pokemon in my head. But apparently, it is. Yeah, it decent. might benefit from the. It might benefit from the uh, the special stats being combined. I know there's quite a few Pokemon yeah. in, in Gen One which benefit from that, and I'm sure that's one of them. It learns horn drill too, also. That helps. <laughs> ah. Okay. <laughs> Lapras is Lapras? I don't think Lapras would learn horn drill. Maybe. No, no. No. Okay. No catches. Axions with a uh with a two oh eight twenty six. I assume that just means starter. And then maybe pick up some other Pokemon. Yeah, I don't like, know. That get given to you. I would assume that was 
be that Warlocks. sounds right yeah it would have to be gift mons maybe lapras is a pretty obvious pick uh, Pokemon Yellow category extensions. Uh, all trainers world record by Sahakil with a 614.54. Uh, just fair play on doing all trainers. Um, do, do, do. Lots of custom starters. <laughs> lots and lots of custom starters. Some with instant text and auto mash with, specifically. Uh, Ranger mentioned about that it's a fairly new. Uh, uh, ROM, I guess. In the, I guess it'd be ROM that, yeah, that's allowing instant text and auto mashing. Great for people. At least for stuff like this. Um, yeah. Uh, Raichu world record with from Concert three ten twenty seven. Uh, Victory Bell, uh, world record from Switch with a three thirty fifty. Snorms with a Raichu instant text and auto mashing. That's a fair bit of time difference from allowing that. But Snorms, yeah, with a 237.24. Um, underscore, uh, underscore Poi uh, with a Lectabuzz, a 239.24. Also with Mewtwo with a 245.58. And then Switch with Clefable, a 315.07. Uh, Leaf Green catch them all. Uh, Shep. Shep, Sheep. I feel like it's probably... Is it Sheep? No, Shep. I'm saying Shep. Uh, Shep My boys. Yeah. Well, Shep with a world record of 1546.24. Yeah. That sounds like a time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next level means with the Battle Pass world record as well with a 40109. Battle Pyramid Gold from Goddess Maria, a 210.11. Corvo Bow with the Alt Language Italian Manipulus World Record for any percent diamond and pearl as a 106.39. Then Alwo with the French any percent Alt Language Manipulus World Record with a 106.16. France quicker than Italy, apparently. Based on this <laughs> very small sample size. Uh, I, I th This run might have been on the balls earlier. Uh, in like the part of the main balls. But still, Minipolis Skills is second place for Tucker. With a 355.43. Uh, Took a little, uh, like took her with the Minipolis any percent world record a two eleven oh four, uh, Qtor in second with all main post typhlosion, on English, uh, with a four eight oh four, uh, but Dexy with the Japanese all main post typhlosion world record a three thirty two thirty four. That's a pretty good time. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely beats the English record. Yeah, as it was the English one. Oh yeah, by I mean, over twenty minutes. The timing is different. But but overall, yeah, timing is different. Yeah, but even still, um, Minipolis in black white poke life with a three twenty seven forty eight. Um, black uh, black white two, alt main pokes Ampharos, Ed head with a four thirty eight thirty two. X Y all mega stones head bob. Very quickly, how was that run? Um, yeah, we just did like a, we routed it off of Josh. Josh had done a run of this category, and we kind of, like, me and a bunch of people in uh in Truly's Discord took the notes and like kind of rerouted it a bit. And then we all did a big race, a little race. Um, how many how many mega stones is it? I want to say like twenty nine or something around something like that, below thirty. Um, and so basically it's just like the post game section and just like going here and there for mega stones. Um, so this beat the other, this, pre this beat the previous record by like, I think like 30 minutes or something. I, re I remember a year ago bullying Josh into doing all Mega Stones XY, uh, cause that's when we were really into doing all Mega Stones or ass. Yeah. It's not so bad. Kinda, I mean, it's a, it's a nice little thought process of just like, 
but what it's like haha jk but what if <laughs> uh ultra, uh, ultra sun ultra moon rainbow rocket primal pizza with the world record a 70444 actually with the all main pokes arc nine and let's go uh world record a 339.29 Many more trade alt lanes in the Sword Shield. Would not mm -hmm. be surprised if it's at least over 80. Um, Lots of the evolutions. Point. Yeah, a lot of the evolutions. Partly Morgum because... pumps. Morgum does like a trade alt main pretty much like every day nowadays. There's yeah. still still has like three to four in the queue. <laughs> <laughs> that is nice. Um Spy, uh, Spy C with the Tower of Two Fists, don't get a true world record, a 113.25. Iron in third with a 114.30. Decent run, would you say? Were you happy with it? Uh, it was okay. I think um, it had really, it had, I think, like the worst special attack you could run. Um, those seem to be the runs that finish, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um,. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think it was it was okay. I think I was I definitely wanted to get a bit better. I wanted to get into the one thirteens for sure, but uh, I definitely happy with that for now. So I moved on to the worst category. I'm gonna try to PB in that. How's that been going as well? Uh, <laughs> I've been keeping track of my deaths, and I've just been having less runs get deep for whatever reason. It's just the way it goes sometimes, but. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely, uh, I put a lot of time into just working on a little bit of routing improvements. Um, I play on shield too, so it's, uh, slightly different than sword. Yeah. But, slightly, uh, it's slightly been kind of cool to see. Avery's bad. Yeah. Yeah, he's, Avery's brutal. Avery, <laughs> a lot Avery's of bad. Guys. I once again have to ask, Head Bob, are you ever going to come back to the Get Rich Fuse? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, once again... There, on my list, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> my time is very bad. So. Yeah, because you, you were doing the day one routing for it. Yeah, I wrote it, I ran it um, June of 2020 when it initially came out. But you it was really, really day. interesting seeing the routing process in terms of how you, it, was, it got to where it is today. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of, I was kind of looking back and seeing how it kind of started in terms of routing. It was pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, like Spider with some, like some new stuff fairly recently as well. I yeah, not Spider hunt... Spider's been like a beast in this recently. It's crazy. Yeah, the one that's like the main thing that sticks in my mind is the mint. Mint. Yeah, yeah, just like why why did no one ever think of that? But it's such a good idea. <laughs> I've <laughs> like, added yeah. that to my notes for Getter Shifu now. If I have certain, if I have like minus a. Minus speed, and maybe even... Oh, minus attack, I think, is workable, but definitely minus speed. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I need to add to mine. I need to get back to it at some point as well. One thing, I guess on the topic of that mint, I don't know if, if Spider's experimented too much with this, but I've noticed it's... I've always gotten serious mint. Um, which is pretty good, which is a good mint to get, because it's neutral. Yeah. Um, I've been, like, concerned about getting, like, just a, a bad mint, like... Like a like a modest mint or something, which is useless, yeah. or something like that. So I'd be very curious to see. Like, obviously, I haven't done too many attempts with it, but um, I've been very consistently getting um, serious. But I have to play around with a bit of bit a bit more. There's a few mints in that area, I think, isn't there? I think only there might be, but I think that's the only one that's in a really good spot. Okay. It's this very small detour for that one. Uh, either way, though, uh, just, we are very close to the end of this. So I'll just do a bit of rapid fire. BSP Alt Root uh, Japanese with Crobat. Yoshida Shu with the world record A3 56.44. Alt Main Mew. Yoshida Shu with A3 29.24. Alt Main Mew in Japanese this time. Uh, YT, uh, YT Reds with A3 29.31. You know, you know, with a 33309, and she just with a 33650, Kojia with a 352.42, 80% no out of bounds, English, no squared with a 4554, 84. Uh, 80% no glitch state, 
you know, we know with the world record they had 38.14, Aspect in second was a 39.05, Yoshida in third was a 39.39. 39. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, world record in EBR category extensions 3 past Nate plus Tommy plus Joel. Uh, RDA with a 440 flat. Stargazers round 2 transfers. Uh, P's with the world records of 218.54. And then. Pokemon Snap category extensions. Magikarp Switch. Oh, Magikarp percent Switch. Uh, Mako Kazooie with a 2525. And then a fair few two player one controller N64 uh, world, oh, times. Third place for Quorin Alpha Delta Mike with 2227. Quorin and CC Never Ender 2252. CC Never Ender and Elsie Lemon with a 2314. And then I wonder how that category works in terms of. I have no two idea. Players one controller. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming. I know so little about side yeah. games. Yeah. I like. <laughs> yeah. They're not. Unless they've. They were all run on the same days, so I assume they all got together. <laughs> yeah. So, that would yeah. be but I, yeah. Otherwise, I have no idea how they're doing that. But that is the leaderboard roundup. This podcast has been going on for two hours. <laughs> so I apologize <laughs> uh, if you've had to do anything at Bobo, Teapot, or Iron. Oh, no. That's all good. I have this, like, two and a half hour block that's I'm prepared for the podcast for, to run for so it's all good I, I, I was just gonna say like when you when you scroll past the uh the diploma cat axes I was gonna say like hey I'm about to do a couple of those this weekend was there actually any oh, okay go scroll back up quickly uh diploma wasn't there oh wait I, I the diploma's main board that's why <laughs> I, I was just gonna say uh I actually haven't submitted the one I did with pulse yet uh, but Pulse and I got a uh, 506 uh, recently. And yes. then the next time we did it, he couldn't find Dratini, and that was very cool. Uh, oh, no. It happens. <laughs> and he, had a, he had literally like a 30-plus minute Dratini, and it was like, well, <laughs> rip this attempt. A lot of times, but indeed. No. Um, yeah, so a little outro things that we need, oh, that we should do. Um, next podcast should be September 3rd. Uh, that will be after the marathon, of course. So I assume there'll be some sort of roundup there. Um, go ahead and follow if you... Damn it, I always forget the S. <laughs> I always forget the S. Podcast guests. Um, please follow Headball. Please go. follow T-Pat. Two very, 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 very good runners. Uh, also, if you it'll do also so, follow I... Jordan ninety seven, also a very good Pokemon speedrun runner. There you go. The, Pokemon, the podcast hosts. <laughs> uh, follow etiquette. Follow myself. Follow Iron. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's anything else in particular, is there? So, nope. Unless, I any last words? Uh, good. No, just thanks for having me. Um, uh, as a first timer. It was uh, yes, a lot of fun awesome. just ch uh, chatting with, chatting it up with you guys. Yeah, thank you for, for uh, thank you for being here. Yep. Um, thanks for thanks for joining. Yeah. So everyone, have a good rest of your day or evening wherever you are. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.